Let's crack a big dose. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG, Big Dog's Gotta Eat Fantasy Football, and this is arguably one of the most important videos that you'll see this year. Because if you're watching this, you're in the semifinals, or well, one of two options. You're either in the semifinals or you're a fucking weirdo and you just like watching my videos even though you're not even in fantasy football leagues anymore because your ass got knocked out. But a lot of your asses are still in your seats. We're fighting, we're scrapping, and since you're watching this content, you're probably ahead of the game. Okay? I don't want to keep you all ahead of the game. Week 15 rankings. We're looking at running backs, we're looking at wide receivers that I think are notable for this week, that I have ranked a little bit higher than ECR, expert consensus rankings for per, per, per. I ain't no fucking cat. The fantasy pros, expert rankings that are uploaded each week. Okay? Running backs, wide receivers. Maybe we'll touch on some other positions depending on how ridiculous my rants get, how much time we got left in this bitch. Okay? So, what we need to start off by doing it's tucking our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. All right. At Big Dogs, we prefer to diversify the revenue. Okay, y'all know I'm a man of business. When we are not talking about fantasy football, we're usually talking about some kind of marketing or branding or business related content topic, right? It's my passion, it's my hobby. Thus, since I'm in the fantasy industry in a sense, I like to get involved with other businesses and brands that I think are doing that aspect of whatever it is they're doing very, 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 very well. Player Profiler is one of them. Uh, y'all know friend of the show, Mr. Matt Kelly, the podfather creator of player profiler now we do dynasty content we try to do it as best as we can right over on bunk bed breakdowns that is their primary form of content and it helps you throughout the off season helps you during in season and especially it's going to help you from january through you know your startup drafts if you are into the dynasty landscape if you're not i would hope that you start to transfer your interest toward dynasty because it's a really 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 fun way to stay engaged throughout the off season we don't have all the tools and stuff for Dynasty. We just try to do the research and put out content. However, Player Profiler has done this. I'm not just saying this because they're a partner of mine. This is something I would easily pay for myself. This is the number one Dynasty tool, Dynasty resource in on the globe, in the interwebs, on the internet, anywhere, okay? So they have, they basically packaged up all the tools that they put together and they made it the Dynasty Deluxe thing the dynasty deluxe package okay within the package it's got i mean obviously they keep their dynasty rankings updated as do we but they have a lot of like cool tools that they worked very very hard on to get out and one of my favorite ones is the draft app so if you guys or the uh, trade calculator app so if you have have downloaded the dynasty dominator app They've basically put it onto the web form, okay? So not only do they have the Dynasty rankings on here for y'all, you know, in every sort of player format, super flex, tight end premium, include rookies, not rookies, whatever, trade finder, trade analyzer, ADP tracker. So this shit is really, really useful in the off season to kind of combine with the content that we and they do as a brand put out. So, you know, I'm not really supposed to show y'all this, but like the trade analyzer is really fucking cool because a lot of people come into Dynasty and don't really understand how to um, how to move draft picks, how to move startup picks if you're in a startup draft, how to move rookie picks especially, how to value them versus another player. And I typically, I'm, you know, it, it's not always black and white. You don't just use a trade calculator and then say, okay, I want this trade, I don't want this trade. Don't send fucking screenshots of a trade calculator to the person you're trying to trade. What it does is it gives you a really, really solid baseline of the values of players, okay? So you kind of just like throw in different players into this thing. We'll say like T. Higgins, right? T. Higgins... Throw them in there. We'll say a rookie 2021. This is so fucking aesthetically pleasing. This is what I love about them as a brand. Like they don't do things half-ass. You don't, you don't see things fucking spurting all over the place. You don't th see things breaking. Like this thing is smooth as fuck. So we'll go first round, the 104 T Higgins. Let's say uh, the 2021 second round 10th pick. And obviously this is going to be super useful in the off season. We have the 104 T Higgins, the 210. And let's throw another player in here, you know, that's kind of like down the list. Let's say like Tim Patrick, okay? 
this is this maybe this is like a trade that you get offered or something right and you're like ah, i don't really know it's a lot starts going around you got numbers you got picks you're not sure how to value these players put these things in analyze it gives you a baseline of who's winning the trade based on the total lifetime value of the players okay so then you can kind of work off of that rather than getting absolutely destroyed in the trade which is what you see happens in a lot of dynasty leagues i'm assuming a lot of you guys in my audience are going to be trying out dynasty leagues for the first time this off season you'll get access to our big dogs dynasty leagues via uh discord if you join our patreon patreon.com forward slash bdge but if you want help with all the technicalities and stuff and knowing about adp and and helping with trade analyzers and keeping on top of dynasty rankings and stuff the dynasty deluxe tool is fucking awesome and i mean when you sign up for the player profile like package in general you're getting things in season like the rankings so you'll get their weekly rankings like we put out obviously they have the dynasty the seasonal the cornerback rankings are obviously something very niche and something nuanced and, and very like you know, hard to come by in the fantasy industry. It's something that not a lot of sites kind of waste their time, not waste their time on, but use their time on to bring out something this, uh, you know, small. Again, I don't want to say like fucking waste of time because it's not at all, but it's something small that a lot of companies don't use their time doing. They do it over here on Player Profiler. So I want to give a quick shout out to them because the Dynasty Deluxe is a very, very awesome, useful package. And everything that they put on the phone in terms of the apps is now on the website and you can get it on their website when you sign up for the Dynasty Deluxe. So head over to Player Profiler, click the Dynasty Deluxe up there. If you plan on playing in Dynasty Leagues this offseason, I promise this is the number one resource out there. Okay. So as the offseason comes close to us, as we start getting through championship semifinals week, we are already into the offseason. But as y'all know, this is a lifestyle brand now. This is something we do year round. We're going to be putting out fantasy content, whether it's season long, dynasty, rookie, whatever the fuck it is, all year round. Okay. So make sure you're on top of your shit. You don't want to enter a rookie draft. You don't want to enter these drafts not knowing what you're doing. And this is the number one way to stay on top of it. All right. But let's stay on top of the week 15 rankings. Bike to the video. All right, so go support the brand, us, by supporting their brand as well. Partnerships, a rising tide, as they say. A rising tide, a rising tide, except for a sinking Rojo, okay? So Ronald Jones was dealing with the finger thing. We didn't know if he was going to be out, he was going to be in. Then he gets placed on the COVID list. So I don't know if it's a technicality or not, but I think there's like no chance he plays. Almost like I fucking do this. I think there's like no chance he plays. What an ignorant statement by me. I'm pretty sure Ronald Jones ain't playing, okay? So that would mean Leonard Fournette is probably going to assume that role i'm filming this on thursday afternoon you guys are watching it probably on friday afternoon if not like saturday sunday because you watch it after i post it a lot more news comes out after a lot more news comes out sorry i fucking hate everybody yo except for you robert i love you dog a lot more news comes out after i post these unfortunately which is why we do the live q a tomorrow so if you want to be in the q a I go live for the Patreons, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. You can ask me any sit-star questions you got for the playoffs, and I'll try my best not to absolutely ruin your life, <sighs> or at least ruin your week, at least ruin your year, whatever. Trying not to be dramatic, but Leonard Fournette was a healthy scratch last week, okay? Maybe they want to give Keyshawn Vaughn the keys to the backfield. Maybe they don't want to do that. They probably don't want to do that, because it's not like they've given him any fucking shine at all this year. So what I think is going to happen is Rojo misses. I do think Leonard Fournette, I've seen some reports. I've seen, I've heard some rumors that Leonard Fournette will indeed take Ronald Jones's role. But since, since he was inactive, LaShawn McCoy took some passing down. So I think that will probably be the case. I still think Leonard Fournette will be, you know, quote unquote, relatively operating as the workhorse in Tampa Bay this weekend. Okay. So Leonard Fournette gets this. However, when we're looking at the team overall and like what this offense has kind of become over the last, you know, month, month and a half since AB joined the team, right? He was active in week nine. So from weeks nine through 14, which included one by so five games, if the math is correct, the target rate to running backs since AB has been in the starting lineup or just been in the lineup in general has dropped from 25 percent first eight weeks of the season and every week concurrently after that to 15 percent. That's a big drop off. And then you look at the opponent. They're playing against Atlanta. Very good, very good against running backs on the year. Been very good as of late. They did let up a lot of a lot of production to Austin Eckler last week, right? Nothing like crazy. Didn't get in the end zone. Didn't break off a non-monster play or anything, but nine catches for 67 yards. Fournette is not Austin Eckler, okay? Um, when you look at Tampa Bay's offensive line, I think this is kind of important to note. This is per pro football reference. They have a, an advanced statistics part of their website. They are, Tampa Bay's offensive line, dead last in terms of, yards before contact not in a good way 
So running backs, in terms of yards that they can gain on the ground before contacted, they're at 1.9, which is tied for dead last in the NFL, which I think is a, is a testament to Ronald Jones' success on the ground this year. The fact that he's been able to put out any like reputable big games despite the Tampa Bay offensive rushing line being this bad, Ronald Jones, man, Ronald Jones. Who knows what he could do in a good offense? Put him on Green Bay or some shit? Kid might bop. He might bop a little bit. So I do think LaShawn McCoy will play a passing down role, but I think Fournette is actually a decent flex play despite the matchup, despite like all the weird shit that's gone on around Fournette. It's possible that they're just like, hey, listen, like tomorrow this comes out, they're just like, no, a healthy scratch again for Fournette. We just don't like his work ethic. We don't think he fits to the role, and we let Keyshawn Vaughn play that role. If that's the case, I would have Keyshawn Vaughn ranked lower than I would have Leonard Fournette if Leonard Fournette is active. You know, he always has that chance of taking over the backfield completely and, and getting 20 plus touches. He always has the chance of breaking away a very long run like we've seen him do in his career before, you know, 67 yards. And that alone makes him worth the start. But he always has a chance against Atlanta of carrying the ball like 12 times, 2.3 yards per carry or some shit. So there's a wide range of outcomes. And you consider that when you're ranking a guy like Fournette. So assuming Ronald Jones is out, I'm going to have Fournette around like running back 30. So you can flex him. I think you could flex him, but I'm not getting too excited about him. One guy we'll get excited about in San Francisco is Jeff Wilson if Raheem Mostert is indeed out. He's dealing with this ankle injury, and it sounds like he's more doubtful than probable to go on Sunday. So if Raheem Mostert sits, this gives way to a monster day for Jeff Wilson against the Dallas Cowboys run defense. I have Jeff Wilson up at like running back 18 right now. ECR has him around running back like 22. Again, assuming Mostert is sitting. Look at following their bye week. They had the bye week in week 11. So you've got three games since then. You look at the snap counts, it's 96 for Raheem Mostert, 92 to Jeff Wilson, all other San Fran running backs combined. So Coleman, uh, Jerick McKinnon, those guys, 26. So you have 96, 92, 26. It's clearly a two-headed backfield at this point. Touches. Mostert's gotten 39, two goal line carries, five targets, five receptions. Jeff Wilson, 30 carries, but four goal line carries, six targets, three receptions. So he's actually out-targeted Mostert. He's gotten double the amount of goal line carries, which both of those categories are the more valuable categories when it comes to fantasy. Hasn't gotten as many carries overall as Raheem Mostert, but Raheem Mostert's more of like the in-between the 20s guys, which is fine. You look at those two guys, you have 39 carries, 30 carries. McKinnon and Coleman have combined for five carries and three targets. Again, two-headed backfield minus the one. Y'all do the math. Two minus one equals Jeff motherfucking Wilson running back 18. So if Raheem Mostert's ruled out, he's going to be ranked very highly, probably settling within the running back 15 to 18 range. Again, my weekly rankings, which are not available anywhere besides Patreon, are available only on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash BDGE. There's no way I'm not getting cute and trying to figure out between McKinnon and Coleman if there's another San Fran running back. I'm starting. We're going Jeff Wilson or nobody, okay? Gus Edwards, I've got up as a borderline running back too. Dobbins is a must start right now. He's leading the team in like goal line carries and regular carries and targets and shit like that. You're obviously getting... J.K. Dobbins in this game against Jacksonville. Now, Ingram, 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 Ingram has been completely phased out. Didn't get a single, I, I believe he started the game against the Browns, like literally the first snap, and then didn't get a single touch for the rest of the game. This was a game in which the Ravens scored 47 points, okay? Clearly a two-man show. Since he returned in week 10, Mark Ingram is averaging four touches a game, okay? Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, Gus, I'm getting excited about Gus this week. I will say, to play devil's advocate, Gus actually has not gotten like a, a, a ton of work, even counting the game. So we have five games over the last five weeks, one of which Dobbins and Ingram both missed for COVID. Over the last five games, Gus is only averaging like seven to eight touches per game, but he has scored six touchdowns in the last eight games. And that's where the excitement comes from. Now, they're also down both Marquise Brown. Notice we're not calling him Hollywood anymore until he fucking re-earns that nickname. And Miles Boykin. Both of them have been placed on the COVID IR list. I think even if they're close contacts, like it's too close to game day to get them back into the lineup. So we're looking at a team which is phase Mark Ingram out, which is starting to click a little bit more on offense, which is going to be down Hollywood, fraud Hollywood Brown, and Miles Boykin. We'll go like South Hollywood, East Hollywood. There's another type of Hollywood somewhere, right? Hollywood, Florida. Well, that's that's what we'll do. Florida, Hollywood Brown, Miles Boykin, both out for this game, I believe. Look at the game script in total. Baltimore, they're going to be like two touchdown favorites. I believe the line right now is like 13 and a half. They're against a miserable Jags run defense who have allowed the single most fantasy points to the running back position over the last three weeks. Over the last three weeks, they've allowed 561 rushing yards to running backs. Three games, okay? And do the math. That's like 100 and... It's nine hundred, yeah. About 190 rushing yards per game to running backs over the last three games. That's actually fucking absurd. 
and that's like 5.6 yards. It's on 100 carries, 5.6 yards per carry. That's like Gus's wheelhouse right there. Give him 12 carries, 5.6 yards per carry. There should be plenty of goal line opportunities. So when you're looking at fantasy guys, like he's not a must start, of course, but he's in that range of like, it's Gus Edwards. There's like the David Johnsons, the Todd Gurley's who, you know, should get the same kind of treatment, the same mold in fantasy, right? They don't really have a ceiling, but they're probably going to see anywhere between 10 and 12 to maybe if the game script goes really well up to like 14, 15 touches. I think Gus is in a better offense right now, one that's moving and clicking and has a better chance to score than those guys. So I kind of like Gus. There's like a 30% chance, 20% chance that he doubles up on touchdowns again like he did last week. I think he's probably a coin flip, if not 60% chance just to outright get into the end zone, which gives him a nice, nice floor. The ceiling obviously isn't there for a guy like Gus because he doesn't really break big runs. He's not involved in the passing game, but I think you could definitely do worse than Gus even though Ingram is technically fully bike, but he ain't getting any fucking play time. All right. James Conner, on the other hand, is getting play time, but I have him ranked real fucking far down. Running back 28. I think ECR has him at running back 22 or 23. So it's not like everyone's really high on him anymore. He's been awful though. Last five games, averaging 3.5 yards per touch. Okay. Not even yards per carry, yards per touch, 3.5. And of the last five games, Four of them, Dallas, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, Buffalo on the schedule, all terrible, terrible run defense, and he can't get a goddamn thing done, okay? Much of that apparently has to do with the bruised thigh, right? He was terrible last week against Buffalo, 10 for 18 on the ground. They come out afterwards, and they're like, yeah, he's dealing with some kind of bruised thigh. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's an excuse, but either way, it's clearly hampering him here. So you add the fact that he's not getting a ton of volume. He's not running well. Uh, the Pittsburgh offensive line is a reason why he's not running well, right? We talked about Tampa Bay, how they were dead last in yards before contact with 1.9 yards before contact, number 32 in the NFL. Pittsburgh's actually tied with them. They are also at 1.9 yards before contact, tied for dead last in the NFL. That's another reason that you cannot play a guy like Connor because he's not elusive enough to make guys miss. Ben is just throwing it to Deontay Johnson on, on dump off plays, Juju Smith-Schuster on dump off plays like every play. So the offense is not even close to running through James Connor anymore, which is what it was doing at one point when they were having success, but they're not doing it anymore. So the scheme has kind of changed. James Connor's involvement has kind of changed and the offensive line is just not what it used to be. So Connor is, you know, you could sit Connor if you need to. We'll put it that way. You could sit both of the Buffalo running backs as well, right? We talk about, both of those other offensive lines, Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, 2.0 yards before contact. They are 30th in the NFL. So their offensive line is not blocking for these running backs. You look at the receiving work. They're targeting the running backs on 15% of their pass plays, which is way below the NFL average of 19%. Okay, so 4% target share dropped off to 15%, split between two guys. It's not pretty for either one of them. Tweeted this stat out earlier today. Devin Singletary has one touchdown, both receiving and rushing total combined, one touchdown over his previous 256 touches dating back to like week 13 of last year. The guy just gets zero valuable touches, okay? Uh, Zach Moss is not getting in the end zone either. He hasn't scored since week nine. We're about to be into week 15. Uh, their touch splits since their bye week in week 11 have gone 43 to Devin Singletary, 28 to Zach Moss. So even if you want to say Zach Moss is getting the valuable goal line touches, which he's not because nobody is, He's getting a lot fewer overall touches than Devin Singletary, who's not actually getting any valuable touches here. So I don't feel good about starting either one of these guys. I think both of them will probably be just outside of my top 35 overall. So unless you're hella desperate, which you probably won't even be in the fucking semifinals to begin with, both of these guys will be far and away out of my lineup. Let's shift gears. Let's shift gears to the wide receivers. Okay, so the chart up on the screen, the shadow coverage chart for guys that are expected to receive shadow coverage. This is per PFF Pro Football Focus dot com. OK, in their PFF edge or elite package or whatever, they've got this tool in there. So we've got Calvin Ridley getting the Carlton Davis treatment. Now, Calvin Ridley, it doesn't matter with Julio Jones out. Calvin Ridley's in your lineup as a top five wide receiver. No questions asked. Carlton Davis started off the year really, really well. It looked like he was going to be an actual force on the outside, but he's been absolutely burned over the last like month of the season by a lot of the top wide receivers. I don't think there will be any difference here with Calvin Ridley. Okay. So nothing there. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins supposed to get Darius Slay. Darius Slay got, continues to get banged up and he got banged up in last week's game. I believe he will be suiting up for this one, but Darius Slay is not someone I'm nervous about playing when it comes to DeAndre Hopkins. He finally fucking balled out again last week. And I expect the same for DeAndre Hopkins. And you can see the rankings on both sides. Again, you've probably watched these videos before, but just to cover it, uh, the second or the one on the left, the colorful charts over there, the one on the left is PFF coverage grading for the cornerbacks. The one on the right is 
player profiler coverage grading for cornerbacks. Uh, again, the PFF is behind a paywall, but if you go to playerprofiler.com, you could look at, you can't look at the outright rankings for free. Again, you can get that in the Dynasty Deluxe package. But what you can do is type in an individual wide receiver's name. It'll show you who they expect that receiver to get covered by this week, the cornerback and the uh, coverage rating for that cornerback on the wide receiver's player profiler page. So those are the rankings per. And uh, the lower the number, the better the cornerback is, right? So if one of the cornerbacks is ranked number one, that means they're the number one coverage cornerback. And it's a really tough matchup for the wide receivers. You have Deontay Johnson versus William Jackson. Now, again, this is per player profiler. And William Jackson has been an absolute fucking beast for Cincinnati, 18 and 13 out of 126 and 125 qualified cornerbacks. However, this is something I brought up earlier in the year and earlier this week. Uh, Player profiler has Chase Claypool seeing most of William Jackson. And if you look back at what's happened up to this point this year, PFF has not credited any shadow coverage to Deontay Johnson. He has not been shadow coverage this year. Chase Claypool has been shadow coverage a few times. So if there's going to be one of the wide receivers getting shadow coverage, it's probably going to be Claypool. I don't expect William Jackson to stick on Deont- onto Deontay Johnson. Now, a lot of people are low on Deontay Johnson. Coming off of last week and the drops and stuff, I think I think that he gets back into his normal, his normal slot being the highest snap guy the highest route run and the highest targeted receiver i know he's been awful over the last few weeks but like this is a very fucking good player and i don't think right now is the time to fade him in a nice matchup with cincinnati which i don't expect him to get william jackson so deontay johnson while i'm not going to have him up where i had him for the last like month and a half it's like a top 12 borderline wide receiver one he's still like wide receiver 15 18 in that range and someone that i think you need to have in your lineups we have marvin jones getting shadowed by malcolm butler i need to get water One eternity later. <clears throat> Sorry, I need a little water break right there. Now, while my throat needs a water break, you know what does not need a water break? The Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped, okay? It's waterproof. And what is the Lawnmower 3.0? It is the best grooming tool for the downstairs part of your beautiful templed body, okay? You want to keep your shit clean. Not your physical shit, but you want to keep, you know, I keep using the word shit as like an actual noun or an adjective or I'm not good with grammar. So I'm going to fucking stop trying to do that right now. But we're partnered up with Manscaped. okay? and I wouldn't partner with a company unless I believed in their products and I use all their fucking products. I use their crop reviver. I use their ball toner. I use their ball deodorant. But most importantly, I use the lawnmower 3.0 and they have a beautiful package called the performance package 3.0. This little buzzer that cuts up and down your body without actually cutting you it trims you it's waterproof you could use it in the shower it's a beautiful gift for any male or female in your family okay 2020 females don't be need to get waxed anymore they're comfortable being themselves they're probably still going to get a little bit of a a shave going on down there up there wherever the fuck you want to do it but this is a gift for anybody okay might feel weird giving a a woman a a manscaped product but y'all get the point okay and it also comes which I actually used last night. I don't know where the travel... I didn't sleep at home last night. I used a travel case somewhere, and I put all my shit in it. I put weed in it. And that's fake. That's fake news part. I didn't put my weed in it because I don't smoke weed, okay? Don't do drugs, kids. Stay in school. Unless you know what you actually want to do, don't waste money on school. But waste money on Manscaped, okay? Manscaped.com, best products, best packages, best for grooming below the waist, and best gifts for this holiday season when you use promo code bdge you're going to get 20 percent off plus free shipping it'll get here before christmas use it now use it hard use it good use it in the shower marvin jones gonna get showered and shadowed by malcolm butler malcolm butler didn't start the year off hot but he has become a key piece of this tennessee defense which is not a great defense to begin with but he's one of the positive parts of this defense ranked 19th in pff among 126 qualified cornerbacks, ranked 23 among 120 per player profiler. So we've got two different sites ranking around the same. He's going to shadow Marvin Jones. Kenny Galladay's never going to play football again. And Matthew Stafford is more doubtful than he is probable for this game. So you're going to have Chase Daniel throwing to a shadowed Marvin Jones. I don't like that whatsoever. Okay. Not that he's going to put up a dud or a zero, but like you know, a four for 50 game without a touchdown is probably way more likely for Marvin Jones than what we've become accustomed to with Kenny Galladay 
out of the lineup. So I'm probably going to stay away from Marvin Jones. He's going to be ranked like wide receiver 35 to 40 in that area. Darius Slayton, not that anyone was fucking starting him, but he's getting Terrence Mitchell shadowing him, which is also not that tough of a matchup because the Cleveland Browns have been down Denzel Ward. They've been down Greedy Williams for basically the entirety of the year. But this is probably going to be a game again without Daniel Jones because he's healing up from the hamstring injury. Then he fucked up his ankle. So he's dealing with two injuries, which make him doubtful as well. Uh, player profiler, though, another note, player profiler does have Terrence Mitchell covering Sterling Shepard. Regardless, I don't want any part of this Giants passing game. Let's talk about Kiki QT, though. I don't hate Kiki QT, okay? I'm going to have him ranked probably around wide receiver 30. I, I think you could absolutely get him into your lineups. Like, he scored a touchdown last week, which made him, like, semi not suicidal for his owners. But the volume obviously wasn't there. Now, Kiki QT... With Brandon Cooks out, right? Brandon Cooks missed last game. Kiki QT snap count from the slot two weeks ago, three weeks ago. He had been primarily running from the slot at like 75%. So he was their slot guy. With Cooks out, leaving the outside wide receiver position unoccupied, his snap rate in the slot dropped from 75 to 59. Kiki QT is a slot guy. We need him in the slot. Brandon Cooks will be biked for this game, okay? So will Xavier Rhodes. So you're probably going to see Xavier Rhodes on Brandon Cooks. And we have a sample size of QT this year with this exact same setup against Indianapolis. It happened like two or three weeks ago. That was his breakout game, eight for 141. So if we're nervous to play QT, I understand. I absolutely do. But I think he is fine to get right bike into your lineups. I'm not really worried about QT this week. He's someone that you could put in as a wide receiver three or a flex play. What else do we got going on here? So Cole Beasley is at 31, but this is going to be pretty highly dependent on whether or not John Brown is playing. He is practicing, and they did designate him from the IR, which means he can play this week. I don't know if he's going to. If John Brown is active in the lineup, uh, obviously this knocks Cole Beasley down a peg. If he's not, this is not a bad matchup against Denver, uh, so he could be like a, a borderline top 30 guy. Russell Gage is down at 34. We do not expect Julio Jones to play. So Russell Gage, you know, we, we've seen this many times where – there's just no baseline for what we can expect from Hulu, uh, from Russell Gage. He His floor is all the way fucking down here. His ceiling is where you can't even see the video camera anymore. That's a lie. His ceiling's not really that fucking high. But he has games where he gets a ton of volume, and he puts up a lot of production with Julio, without Julio. So listen, he is uh, he's just a complete gamble. He's a complete dice roll, and you don't know what you're going to get from Russell Gage. But with Julio out, you know, who fucking knows, okay? Calvin really is supposed to get shadowed. Maybe they target Russell Gage a little bit more. I think he's like an okay desperate flex play but i'm not getting excited about russell gage there's not a lot of other guys i'm getting excited about down this list i mean i guess willie sneed is here as like kind of a sleeper they have a great matchup against jacksonville and lamar jackson's throwing the ball a little bit better i guess not really but without hollywood brown without miles boykin it's going to be mark andrews and it's going to be i guess willie sneed in the passing game hopefully devin duvernay gets a little bit of run i'm kind of excited about duvernay as someone who i like to come out of texas right again going back to the dynasty shit we know these rookies we get excited about them even though they get no fucking play time hopefully we see devin duvernay get into the lineup though and make make a little bit of of noise here uh any other like deep sleepers i like this week not really man the jets have a, such a tough matchup against the rams Alan Lazard still getting kind of like worked back into his starting role, which he doesn't really have yet. Michael Gallup, you cannot trust with Dalton under center. Gabriel Davis, if John Brown is back, like Gabriel Davis almost becomes unplayable. That's really all we got for this week. Running backs, wide receiver rankings, flex plays, ECR, all that shit. We'll go through defense really, 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 really quickly because maybe some of these guys are available on your wire. I'll go through the top, top five, top five, top five, top five. Los Angeles Rams versus the Jets, number one. Pittsburgh Steelers at Cincinnati, backup quarterback, number two. Baltimore Ravens versus Jacksonville at home, playing well. Gardner Minshew bike under center, number three. Buffalo Bills at Denver. I might need to revamp this. Buffalo Bills at Denver. I probably won't have them that high. I think the next, really, it's like those three, and then the next 10 are in a tier together. You have Buffalo, Miami versus New England at home. Cleveland Browns at New York, who are probably going to be without Daniel Jones. And Tennessee versus Detroit at home. I like Tennessee a lot. They are 11 point underdogs. They're not a good defense, but they're 11 point or they're 11 point favorite. Sorry. Tennessee's an 11 point favorite. They're playing at home and they're playing against a backup quarterback. That is a formula that can overcome bad defenses. Okay. So I really like Tennessee as a sneaky defense that you could probably find on your wire right now. 
right now fungal right now hit the thumbs up button right now do a lot of things right now go to manscape right now go to player profile right now anytime there's a promo code somewhere to put in fucking any website bestbuy.com fucking pornhub.com just try promo code bdg we probably got a promo code somewhere okay so player profile or dynasty deluxe manscaped.com that's what we got man good luck in your week 15 matchups i hope we see you bike here for week 16 because that means you made the hardware game we want to bring home as much hardware as we possibly can we want this bitch to be packed with hardware we want to live we want to win every league that we enter it's a nearly impossible task which is already not possible for me because i've already been knocked out of one of my playoffs but we got a huge matchup against snacks this week anytime get down Huge matchup against Mika and Go Fade Me. Huge matchup against, I don't know who the fuck I'm playing in my other leagues. But it's just a huge weekend, okay? So it'll be filled with anxiety. Filled with margaritas. Hopefully filled with fucking tacos and Chick-fil-A. But I love y'all. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for sticking around this long. Anything I talked about will be linked in the description. If you want the rankings updated throughout the week, patreon.com forward slash BDGE. Robert, thank you for the edit. As always, I'll see y'all on the live stream tomorrow.